I've written Lord of the Horns, uh, a book that starts like a love affair. You will soon hear a short sample of it. And ending in a confrontation, well, with this Lord of the Horns. I bet you know whom I'm talking about. So it's a journey of a well-settled banker from Hamburg, from northern Germany, who is coming to Cuba. And this Cuban life is completely different, of course, to all that he has passed before. It's quite archaic. You might know uh, Buena Vista Social Club, Buena Vista Social Club, as a cliche that Wim Wenders created for us. And, um, well, that to me was uh, an eye-opener as well. Nobody talks about Buena Vista Social Club but the Germans. The Cubans, uh, they have other problems. It's, it's like a like a German Democratic Republic with palms. So uh, they, they, they're searching for the good stuff uh, and uh, trying to find it. Um, everyday life is quite hard, and I didn't spend it in Havana, as I was in research for this novel, but in Santiago de Cuba, which is a thousand kilometers far east from Havana, so uh, Castro is far, and, and Africa is near. It's a completely black society, uh, black and all these other colors. So most of the time I was the only white there and I come back to that point, which was quite fascinating to me. Uh, and soon I realized that uh, this part of Cuba is stuffed with all these Afro-Cuban religions. It's like a melting pot of, of, of what I've only heard of. Voodoo is one of it, Santeria the other, Palo Monte. And uh, if you walk around the streets, you come across the signs, but as a tourist, you, you think, oh, how colorful, or, or it's just uh, the, the, the dustmen didn't do their work, or what. <laughs> but still, they, uh, this is uh, sacrificed stuff, and uh, you have to learn about it. You have to learn the myths and uh, how they do their rituals to, to get the idea, no, that's not colorful, that's Jemaya or another god. Uh, symbolized by these colors. So I lived uh, there for almost half a year and um, I got to know uh, priests, uh, santeros and paleros, and uh, I was shocked of the religion but uh, fascinated as well. So the, sometimes I had to say to myself, it's, it's only research, isn't it? Uh, but um, to be true, uh, blood is very important to all of them, and uh, they, they, they try to get a lot of blood inside their pots, their holy pots. Uh, w w they are stuffed with feathers and sticks and, uh, well, dead, dead uh, material. <laughs> and uh, the blood, it's like, like a battery. They use the blood to, 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 for producing other things later. Uh, that's too complicated to explain, but uh, the only point uh, I'm aiming at is that they even use uh, men's blood, voodoo and palo monte. And uh, there was an authentic case of a famous palero called Armandito Elegua, uh, who was sacrificing a black, a black uh, man. Of course, that's... Uh, for the Lord of the Horns, not for another kind of uh, god. And this Lord of the Horns is not only interested in blood, but in skin. Believe it or not, in skin. And uh, this uh, Palero was captured by the police and shot nearly right away. Of course, it's forbidden. Normally, they do it in the outback. Uh, they do it now. Be sure they do it. <laughs> it's not fantasy. Uh, and as I heard of this Palero, I, I thought to myself, and it was like a vision and a painful vision, of course it was not only a black skin this Palero has sacrificed. He has sacrificed all these different types of dark brown, middle brown, light brown. The only skin he is missing, and I'm sh I was sure he was not shot or maybe resurrected or something, the only skin that missed in his collection for the Lord of the Horns was the white skin because it's so rare 
but my main character is a, a white guy coming from Hamburg. And that was quite thrilling. <laughs> so he comes back to Cuba to search for a woman, and he is being searched already. <laughs> so that was a <clears throat> kind of thing. So that's it. Uh, well, and uh, if I would be a critic, uh, I'd say maybe this whole novel is about how easy it is even for us westernized enlightened individuals to fall in love with archaic cultures to to lose your arrogance towards them to learn and well and at some part you have to decide which way you follow and there is a black way a dark way and uh, directly to this lord of the horns and this uh, novel is, well, the story of a man who walks that way, okay? <laughs> but I'm only uh, reading from the beginning, so like all evil, it starts very, uh, well, uh, beautiful, I'd say. <laughs>